Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors. I'm Dean. Thanks for stopping in, hanging out with me, because in today's video we're going to be doing some building here at Hangman's Alley. Now as most of you may already know, I do like to play in survival. And since Hangman's Alley is kind of centrally located, for me it makes a great hub and a place to easily get to so I can prepare for my next adventure. But Hangman's Alley is one of the hardest settlements to build in. It's not very big, it's extremely tight, and it's only about three stories high. So, in this video series, we're going to take a look at some of the ways that I like to build here to help maximize the area to its fullest potential. And today, we're going to build this little room into a really cool work area. So, let's go ahead, get the video started. <laughs> building seems to be out of place here in this settlement. What it was used for I really don't know. And actually quite a few times I've wished that we could actually scrap it to make a little bit more room here. But with today's tips and tricks we'll see that there's actually quite a few possibilities that you can do with this little area. As an example I'm going to use this junky wall and we'll group select it with a concrete pillar bring it over and line it up to the front of one of those opened areas. Now by doing this it really does give us quite a few more options of what we can do with this little building. It looks pretty good, it matches up quite well with it, and we could still put our workbenches in there and it would give us a lot more room in this area for moving around. But if you like to have settlers here, you could actually maybe put a store vending station there and sell your objects and items out through that opening and still have quite a bit more room. Just keep this in mind, ladies and gentlemen. With today's tips and tricks, there's a lot of possibilities that you can use this little area for. The type of wall that we're going to use in today's video will be these concrete screen walls. If we use group select, they easily insert inside of this pre-existing building with no collision issues at all. And if we spend a little bit of extra time and line them up just right, they really do match those openings extremely well. Now we can go ahead and put out our workbenches. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have three of our major workstations already inside of this little area. We've got the weapons workbench and the chem station on the left-hand side, and now the armor workbench right there. If we wanted to, we could put the cooking station right there, and besides the power armor station, all of our workbenches are located inside of this little area. This next tip and trick is oriented to those of you who are low in level. This particular character is only level 14, and because of that we don't have access to be able to build laser trip wires. So we're going to use these pressure plates. Now they are a little bit thick, and I don't really like that. So we're using a concrete pillar in group select, and we're going to insert these into the ground a little bit. And I'll need two of them, one on the inside, one on the outside. We're going to put in an electrical door to help keep unwanted guests out. Now the trick to this is to try to get it in the right spot. If you move around too much, the concrete pillar will not sink into the wood that's on the ground. It'll only sink into the bricks and the dirt or the concrete. Also, if you get it too far in the ground, you may not be able to trip the pressure plate. So to check that it's going to work okay, we'll just connect it right up to power and we'll walk on it and see if it turns off and on. And it's working fine, so I think that'll be good. You may have to readjust them if it's not working. Now we'll grab the second one, we'll bring it over, and this one's going to be placed on the outside of the area. 
Now what we need to keep in mind here is the electrical door that we're going to put in is kind of thick, like a concrete wall. So we need to try to guess about what the distance of the thickness of the wall is and give it plenty of room for the, the door to go in so it doesn't collide with the electrical connections of the pressure plates. Once again, this one looks like it might be a little bit too low in the ground, so we'll bring over our generator, hook it up, and we'll test it to see if it's tripping on and off. And it seems to be working fine, so I think it'll be okay. Next thing that we're going to want to do is work on our electrical that'll power those pressure plates. We've got some conduits down with electrical conduits on top of it. We're also going to put a few carpets out and we're going to check to make sure that they are stacked on top of one another. Now we can bring our generator over, place it on the carpet, and then we can go ahead and connect it to our makeshift power conduits. But first we want to make sure our generator is on the carpet. What we're going to do is we're going to hide everything underground and in the walls so that way we don't have any electrical sticking out. So we'll group select our conduits, bring it over, and we're going to connect them up to our pressure plates. Now the middle conduit is actually our main power, so they'll be connected to the pressure plates directly. The two outside conduits are going to be the outputs from the pressure plates, so we're going to connect those up to our door. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and connect our pressure plates up to the outputs. Now this kind of looks a little bit complicated, but it's not. Basically what it is is the center is our power in to our pressure plates. The two on the outside are the outputs from our pressure plate to our door. And since we are connected to power, let's just go ahead and see if it's all working before we place it all in. It's better to see if we've made a mistake now than after we put it all in and then got to tear it out. All right, next what we'll do is we will group select with the concrete pillar our electrical and we'll make sure we can sink it into the ground. And then we'll bring it over, line it up to the front of the building the best that we can and it doesn't have to be perfect. And once we get it kind of close, then we can go ahead and insert it into the ground and get it out of the way where it can't be seen. And just like that, there we go. Our power is underground and out of the way. The only wires sticking out are coming off of the pressure plates. And now the only thing left to do is to get our door in. Now this is a little bit more complicated and it may take you several times to try to get this door into this area. Because of the nature of the door, we can't actually sink it into the ground using a concrete pillar. Therefore, you will have to adjust where you put the concrete pillar and group select it. If it's not in just the right spot, you will have a lot of collision issues. But once we've got it, we're going to take a second and we're going to align this up as straight as we can and we're going to use the top of the pre-existing build and the top of the door to do it. And the arrow is showing the little area that I'm using to adjust to get this door just as straight as I possibly can. Once I've gotten it, and it takes a minute because it's pretty finicky, we're going to go ahead and insert it in. Now one thing that I did do wrong here is because of the, wing, uh, the angle or the way I'm looking at it, the door was offset to the left just a little bit farther than I would have liked. But later on when I'm higher levels and I can actually access the laser trip wires, I will tear this out and redo it. So it doesn't matter at this point in time. It's still going to work great and it's still going to look awesome. So once we get it lined up just where we want it, we can go ahead and place it down. We'll move our concrete pillar out of the way and let's see if it's working. Door opens door closes. Yes, working great. And because it is a little bit to the left, we do have some wires hanging out from the door on the inside. And we'll see that here in just a second. If 
we stand on the pressure plate, the door stays open. Boy, that's working excellent. I really like it. Yeah, and you can see the wires sticking out a little bit there on the left. If the door was slid more towards that corner, those wires would be more hidden and we wouldn't be able to see them. That really looks awesome. I really like doing this. I do it almost every time I come to Hangman's Alley. I always do it slightly different just to kind of change it up. But all of our workbenches are now contained inside of that little area. And it gives us plenty of room in Hangman's Alley to move around. All right, well, that's it for today's video. I hope you join me for our next video where we're going to be building over our workbench. And we're going to create this pretty cool little extension or closed off area in front of it. This is really fun to do. There's a lot of possibilities of how you can do this. And so I hope you guys all come hang out with me for that video. Plus, I'll show you how we put those chem boxes and stuff in the fridge. All right, everybody. Thank you all very much. I do appreciate you stopping in, hanging out with me. And just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace.